Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we continued on with the court day. And we're learning a bit more about uh, what happened here. And that supposedly, the killer delivered the bear to Matt on guard. What I just said now reminded me of one of the outtakes from the uh, anime. But, anyways, in this episode, we're supposed to be asking questions about something weird in Powers' testimony, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We're not going to be asking about Powers' testimony himself. I'm going to go ahead and choose the person who received the bear. There was one thing in Mr. Powers' testimony that was very unclear, and that is the identity of the person who received the bear. You gave something to the person inside the room. Oh, I'm sorry, I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear. We can't be sure of- Oh! What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, so, I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm, but, but, the arm, it was the Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear it. Y you've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Order, order. It looks like you've dug your own grave yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took this little bear... So the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, Masan God is the Nickel Samurai. No, that's not... What? <laughs> Thanks to the defense, we've made this all the clearer. What am I supposed to do now? Mia, help! You don't have time to act lost. You've got to find another angle to attack this from. Hurry! Now I will bring this cross-examination to... Your Honor. Again, Mr. Wright. You've, we've already removed any and all questionable areas of this testimony. It's about time you were removed from this court, Mr. Wright. I have to find something. Even one more little point will do. There... There are still questions left unanswered. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Alright. The bear itself. I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear... the bear, Mr. Wright? This was found in Mr. Ungard's mansion. However, Mr. Ungard was arrested at the hotel that night, which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh. I think Your Honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it was Mr. Ungard who took this bear to his mansion. Why, that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Whew. Disaster- You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it's clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Ungod's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time, he was the killer. The killer and Ungard were working together, so to speak. And the killer was hiding at Ungard Mansion as its butler. Uh, what a bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to Ungard Mansion by the killer himself. When he looked like he was about to be arrested, Ungard had him do so. I assume because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Matt Ungard. I see no reason for this trial to continue. 
Therefore, I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? I will now announce my- There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only one thing I have left is this one dirty trick. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is a client of the Assassin. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the Assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was founded on Guard Mansion. However, it's possible this is all just the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I mean, wait, what I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. The real client? Yes. Tisk tisk. Is that all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. What do you say is the real client of the killer, and therefore the real murderer? Well, the only real person who has any sort of connection to Madame Guard that would appear in both his dressing room and be able to appear at his house, and the only person who could have been witnessed by Will Powers and Wendy Oldbag, would have to be Adrian. Adrian Andrews? Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt on guard for the crime. By wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Oh, then, then the nickel samurai's arm that I saw. That could have very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. Rengard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then... Finding this figure at Mr. Rengard's mansion? It was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell me on guard did it. I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin this guilt onto someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty, it's a murder of all things. This is to save Maya. This is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order! 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 All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor. For the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even if you must have... must thought... Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specially bring that bear to on guard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. I see. Well then, the court will take a short 10 minutes recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Ugh. I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick! Pearls, where's Mia? I... don't know. 
A really strong power suddenly called her away. A really strong power? Oh, Mr. Nick! Your phone is... It's from Gumshoe! How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Y yeah, sort of. We just got... We just barely found something to latch onto. Whew, that's good, pal. And what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where the killer and Maya are? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but, uh... What?! We don't have any more time! If we just had one, even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself, I've got to keep the trial going until Maya's been rescued. But have I just run out of luck this time? Is all our hope for naught? A tent. Huh? A tent? I can see a circus tent. But Mia! It looks like Maya was unconscious just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that calls you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I could see a circus tent outside the window about, about 300 feet away. Gumshoe! Is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal. The very big circus. Maya is somewhere within a 300 feet radius of that main tent. Ooh, what? Okay, hold on. Hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map. About 300 feet radius from the main tent. Hurry! And... And? I could see a mailbox under the window. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Hmm. Okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. It felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so. I heard her. An old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. A little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Mia. Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Come, Shoe. Please, hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. God, this entire case is so tense. I love every second of this final court day. Court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real criminal. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You have seen it before. That's right. It's only natural that the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the court as, as to this bear's secrets? Alright. Why? Why does she... Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At its center is a small cavity, with just enough room to store a small item. Because of this complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. So, this figurine, it's a container of sorts, is it? Yes, looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is a su this is superb craftsmanship. Oh, yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. It looks like there really was something to the bear after all. Alright, this is one of those where you just have to press every statement, so... Let's move it through this. A puzzle? That's right. Hmm... But it looks like an ordinary figurine. True enough. To people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. So you can take it apart, and how'd one go about doing that? 
Well, you first turn its tail to the right and then push it in. Oh, yes, I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Ooh, this is most interesting. The boy and his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. So what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? At its center is a small cavity, with just enough room to store a small item. And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend of and I went to Switzerland. Then this... This was, this was a present from you? That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for Juan. So it was a present from Miss, Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland. So I doubt there are that many people with the same bear in this country. But it looks like it can be easily broken. Especially if someone wanted to get what was inside. Well, it's a toy. But it can never be the same again once it's been broken. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or jewelry box? I never told anyone. And as long as Juan never told anyone either, then... Then only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? And of course that means that Mr. Ungard didn't know, right? And I think this is about all I'm going to get for now. Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realize that there's one very important fact that we have uncovered, and that is this. The bear is actually... A jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we have agreed to this point, there's only one logical conclusion that can come next, and that is this. What is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next. Witness. Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please. There's a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes on Miss Andrews now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is that? It looks like a note. I don't think we need to guess at what this is, do we, Mr. Wright? It's the suicide note. The suicide note? The suicide note left by one Corita's former manager, Celeste Impax. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, one Corita himself. It seems Celeste Impax had a very beautiful handwriting, and she just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Order! Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But I couldn't find it anywhere. Because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Edgeworth's pace, so now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least, that's what I would think. Now then, I believe it is only appropriate for the contents of this note to be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much, just to get my hands on it. And I was going to burn it, for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of this note aloud. Very well. The judge's voice rang loud and clear through the dead, silent courtroom. 
In her notes, Lest Impacts left us all a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and then thrown away by Unguard. About being engaged to Corita, and Unguard's role in destroying that. And about how she decided, in her despair, to end it all. And that's all Miss Inpax had to say. There is one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. Ungard. Then... what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post-ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. My word. Miss Matangard values above all else his refreshing like a spring breeze image. Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. It's on guard's fault that woman killed herself. At this time, he even went so far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. How terrible. What a selfish person. I guess, the, I guess there are slimeball lawyers out there who'll defend these creeps too. There is no margin for doubt here. Mr. DeKillis' client's goal was to obtain this suicide note, and the only person who needed that note this badly was the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with this note inside was found at the defendant's house. It seems that we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Ugh. How am I supposed to escape this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Gumshoe isn't called yet, so you know what you must do. I know. I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay. There are two deadly pieces of evidence. The figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of the situation through one of those. The gavel is already in the judge's hand, Phoenix. Hurry. The suicide note of the figurine. Which one of these should I pursue? Let's go with Celeste's suicide note. Objection! Please wait, Your Honor! Oh man, look at that lawyer. Still going at it? It's like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. I think Your Honor believes that Madden Guard killed in order to obtain this note. Yes, that is correct. But that seems a little strange. In fact, I think there's a contradiction here. This note was hidden by Mr. Corita until the night of the murder. If that was the case, then I say that Madden Guard could not have known what was written on this note. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly. But I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. No one in their right mind would kill for a note without first knowing what it said. Order. Order. Order! You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately... I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Huh? The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It is a very small video camera, Your Honor. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? What the... I thought that spy camera was in my possession. Matt and God and the victim both thought of the other as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weakness. And? The victim one Corrido was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt and God. Order. Order! <clears throat> Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor? You. Don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you are confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have that camera that was stuffed in the bear's eye. 
But this camera that I have is not that same one. Last night I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this. Gumshoe's bug sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Matt and Guard's fingerprints were on there. Well, Phoenix, it looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Ungard learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't, I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey, now what the, what's that lawyer thinking? What? Mommy, is that guy a bad killer guy? Shush, stop. Don't look at him. The way he's just sweating is so... Ew. Nasty. Phoenix? Yes, Chief? Have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? What I'm gonna do next? Does running away like a frightened child work? I know it seems like Mr. Edgeworth is very close to putting the lid on this case, but in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? There is a piece of evidence that he should really investigate. Something you should investigate? I would really hate to see the goo prosecutor get scolded. For not remembering to look into the item when he had it when he had the chance. Why are you sneaking in riddles all of a sudden? Alright, I think this time we finally understand everything. Very well, Mr. Wright. You don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Mia's talking about? Can I figure out what the what it is that still needs to be looked at, or should I let it go? Let's present some evidence. I have an objection, Your Honor. <laughs> that was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Objection! Your Honor, the defense has no intentions of letting this go so easily. You are beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? So, you're telling me that I forgot something. You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. But there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. And that piece of evidence... ...is the suicide note itself. That is... Miss Impact's suicide note, right? Hmm... Who knows? I mean, sure, this suicide note was found inside this bear. But this bear was in my possession until a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on the suicide note is yet to be analyzed. Oh. So, as to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impacts or not, has yet to be even remotely confirmed. M Mr. Wright, you can't seriously be suggesting- Mr. Wright, you, are you saying this suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews, you were the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. Engard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into this bear? <laughs> How dare you! Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There is no evidence linking, linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve the puzzle is the witness herself. Ah! Miss Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt on guard. I... I did no such thing. Right, if you're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented this scrap of paper as evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution. Ugh. That's enough. Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on the suicide note? It's as the defense has stated. The handwriting is yet to be analyzed. If that's the case, it seems that yet again we have reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Impossible. That's impossible! 
This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't want to I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate. And writing analysis my butt. That's just the lawyer trying to buy more time. On guard is guilty. Look, any idiot can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of this. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty. 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 What does that sound? It's Gumshoe! Hello? Gumshoe! Ugh. What is with him? What's the- what's with that sigh? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He... uh... He got away. What?! I'm sorry, pal, I really am! I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry! I wish there was some way to make it up to you, I really do! A anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout, pal. But... The two of them were already gone. This is terrible. I'm gonna keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry. I just need a little more time. But... Don't tell me we don't... We don't have any more... Guilty! 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 Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. Wright, I can't... For us to come this far and... Oh! What is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. I, I can't do that. Mr. Wright, would you please get a hold of yourself? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after... Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch! Mr. Edgeworth! Please, you've got to buy us some more time! Court is in session. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying? Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I am reluctant to do this, however. It appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. I... This time... I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Objection! Please wait, Your Honor. Uh, Edgeworth? Uh, what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I humbly request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests on this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. But can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourn for today and then reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes. Please, Your Honor. That's all I am asking for. Please, Your Honor. Very well. At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30 minute recess. But be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. Right. Well, what's going on with Maya's situation? To kill her. Looks like he got away again. 30 minutes? We can't find her in that time. Mm. Report! Uh, is that Mr. Edgeworth? We don't have time, just spit it out. R right. It looks like we just missed him, sir. But Tequila left a few things behind by the accident. By accident, is rushed to get away. A few things? Can we use any of them as evidence? Ho ho ho! I thought you'd ask, pal. I've got the things he left with me right now, and I'm on my way over. Really? If that's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We don't have time to wait for those guys, so... When those guys went looking, I swiped the stuff and ran. What? Well, 
I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to... I'm really sorry, sir, but I've got to put the law on hold for now. Sounds bad. I hope he doesn't, he doesn't get into too much trouble over this. With my Uncle John card, say I'll be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. Uh, Alright, just get here in one piece. I'm on a mission and no one can stop me now, sir. No one. I'm pulling out all the stops and running every red light. Items left by the murderer. Huh. Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me. No one can stop. I'm... What happened? It sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. What was he thinking? We've got to hurry and call for help. But we have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken, and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so there's no radio either. Also, if we don't get those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No! We can't let that happen! Well, if there is a way we can find out where he is, then we, s then we stand a chance. Why, oh why did Gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there any way to find out exactly where he is at this moment? There is a way. That's right! There is a way! What? How? I'm sure we could find out where Detective Gumshoe is through this. Why are you bringing up Francisca at a time like... Oh, I see. I'll try to get in contact with her. The chances are slim, but she's all we have. Francisca. Does she even want to help us? Edgeworth. What is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty, but what I'm doing now, I'm pinning the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say defense attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right. It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict? Is Prosecutor Edgeworth here? Yes, Bailiff. There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. They're probably finished running the handwriting analysis. I have to go with this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do.